called hidden figures. That's what those women were called as well. Apparently, I did not know any of the history of this at the time, and I was sort of baffled by the whole idea of computers itself. <laughs> but what the heck? Uh, it was a job. Um, but the term goes back at least into World War II and maybe even further back than that, of using women who have uh, mathematical ability to do calculations. Um, a lot of code breaking was done by women, for example, that too is an area of where computeresses were used. Anyway, I was hired as a computerist and uh, nobody at that time had women's studies programs I knew nothing about sex discrimination. I knew nothing about the law. I knew nothing about much of anything. But I had a quick learning experience on the job. So, and then this thing about wage hour laws. We had, had wage hour laws in all the states. They varied a little bit. They were state laws. They varied a little bit here and there. But in Texas, the law was called a 954 law. And that referred to the hours. If you were a woman who was an hourly worker, they would say you weren't supposed to work. I would say you weren't supposed to get paid, okay? More than nine hours a day or a total of 54 hours a week. Now you understand a working woman could have three jobs and work a lot more hours than nine a day, and many women did. Work a lot more hours than 54 hours a week. But if you, with regard to a single employer, you couldn't get paid for more than nine hours a day, 54 hours a week. We worked Saturdays, we worked Sundays, we worked eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. We just worked any old time, okay? That's what the team did. And then I discover these other people all get paid. <laughs> and I don't. They would tell me, it's not, you know, they would tell me, my supervisor would tell me, probably, you know, you need to go home because we can't pay you past the way the law works. That's how I discovered about this law. And uh, 60 or 70 hours a week because I'm a woman. That's the only reason. I would stay anyway because one of the things that occurred to me pretty early on being out there, I would say within the first three months I was out there, it dawned on me looking around at these guys I was working with who were making a lot more money than I was. They were not hourly workers, but they were called members of the technical staff and looking around the room and dealing with those guys, it occurred to me one day, I'm as smart as these guys are, but they're making a lot more money than I am. And I decided I wanted to be a member of the technical staff and make the kind of money those guys were making because I was working as hard as they were and I was as smart as they were. So why not? And so, in, in thinking about this in this wage hour law, I'm going to work the way the guys work on this team. And if there's anything that I've ever done that was brilliant, that was it. Because I understood that the real horror of that wage hour law wasn't not getting the overtime. That's just an immediate negative consequence. The real terror of it for women, in terms of what it did, was that it keeps you from getting promoted. <laughs> if a crunch comes, you have to leave. They're always going to want the guy. If, there, if a promotion comes up, they're always going to want the guy. Because they can count on him to be there if they need somebody to work 60 hours a week or 70 hours a week or seven days a week, or whatever. That was the real horror of that wage hour law. And my most brilliant thing was to say, 
so you don't pay me. I'm here, I'm working the same way the guys on the team were working. And the difference that made was that the guys on the team thought I was a member of the team. <laughs> I wasn't somebody who left at six o'clock. And they became advocates for me to be promoted. They were horrified when they found out I was not being paid fairly. And in fact, I mean, that's really part of how it was that I got promoted and made a member of the technical staff. But that journey in and of itself, you see, brought up another clue about how sex discrimination works. One of uh, the women here at my table was talking about the same thing and still, I mean, going on now, currently. This is still happening. The wage hour laws have been changed, okay? But my operations manager told me six months after I'd been there, we want to promote you to be a member of the technical staff. My crazy idea was working, right? <laughs> six months in, I had managed to do this. He said, you know, at your one year anniversary. Okay, I'm patient. Uh, one year comes and I'm not getting my promotion and I'm not understanding what's going on because Charlie was a straight shooter. If he said he was gonna do it, he was gonna do it. That was our operations manager. And then a couple of months go by and finally he calls me in and tells me about my promotion. <laughs> And I discover a whole new thing. The whole upper structure of the corporation to get me promoted because the pay differential was so great between where I was and where I should be. And even then, he said, I gave up, okay? I couldn't get you where you were supposed to be. I fought for two, three months, okay? And, you know, all I was able to get was I was finally able to get you into the bottom of that pay bracket. He thinks I should be higher in the pay bracket, but I was getting a 60% raise, <laughs> okay? They had no mechanism to deal with past discrimination. And one of, the, one of the women over here was talking about the same exact thing, okay? That is still an ongoing problem. That if you are underpaid to start with, most companies today still have no mechanism really to get you there, okay? And that's one of the reasons why women, y'all going out and talking to women, young women especially, need to emphasize to them that they need to really work hard at getting paid what they're supposed to be paid at the beginning. I heard women say, oh no, you know, I don't wanna make an issue of that. I just wanna get in the door. No, you need to get paid right from day one because you will suffer from it the rest of your working career. You will never catch up. I had a very progressive boss, the fact that they promoted me at all. If I had worked at NASA, none of this would have happened. I was working for a very progressive company, a contractor. I had to give up, okay? I, you know, he said, he said, it would have been easier to have fired you and rehired you. <laughs> he said, I could have done that. You know, I could have hired you in wherever. I just could not promote you and give you that kind of raise. So he said, so I'm going to give you the max increase that we can give every review period and give you as many review periods as I can give, okay? So he, I had someone who was fighting for me. Most women do not, and that's why I was extremely lucky. Uh, when I went over to the control center, I was not expecting ever to work in the control center. It was because they accelerated the uh, launch of Apollo 8. Um, and uh, 
they needed the people that developed the return to earth program to come over and help the flight controllers understand what this data was that they were getting because coming back to the earth from earth orbit is not at all like coming back to the earth from a lunar orbit it's a very different kind of thing and over there i got to have the experience of being the only woman in the room um i was pretty used to that by then okay i was the only woman who was a member of the technical staff at trw for several years they did eventually there were some more eventually hired about look at channel whatever 54 whatever look at channel whatever because we have all these screens and you can call up channels and you can call up audio different things and I would occasionally hear somebody comment about that channel and finally one day I went I wonder what's on channel 54 so I turned it on and it was me <laughs> <laughs> just me because they had closed circuit cameras in all those rooms it was just me <laughs> um, I think today that would be called workplace hostile work I'm here I'm a woman get used to it okay <laughs> and they did you know I, I didn't complain to anybody about it I didn't say a word to anybody about it in fact. and you know I was a giraffe in the room that's really what that was and uh, yeah somebody you know some of them may have been leering but some of them were probably just looking because I was an odd appearance, okay? And see, I guess they thought that women couldn't do that job, but there I was. Uh, and they did get used to it. And today, there are a lot of women out at NASA and with the contractors who are working in mission control. In fact, we've had flight, not just people working there, but flight directors actually of some of these missions. And sex discrimination. They should not be staffing those missions based on your gender. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, probably if they were putting the best people on, it would be an all-woman mission. <laughs> I mean, we now have plenty of women astronauts, and there's no, no reason that they should be limiting it to the first woman, okay? Why not have the whole crew be women? But, but the truth of the matter is that, you know, they should not, they really should be staffing it based on who's best, not on the gender. Uh, so last year, I mean, you know, four years, for the last four years, Pence was always going around talking about first woman and next male 